show is approximately 90 minutes, and there will be an intermission halfway through. Make sure to go support the classes of 2025 and 2026 by buying some baked goods during intermission. The emergency exits are located to the right and left, both downstairs and on the mezzanine level. As you prepare to watch the upcoming performance of the drama department, we would like to inform you that the play contains themes that may be sensitive to some viewers. These themes include homophobia, bullying, and suicide. Our intention in presenting this work is to foster understanding, empathy, and dialogue around these important issues. If you are struggling with thoughts of self-harm or are facing harassment or bullying, it is, a, it is crucial to seek help. There are resources listed in your performance program. We are committed to creating a safe and supportive environment for all students and audience members. Your well-being is our priority, and we encourage open and honest communication about these challenging topics. Thank you for your understanding. Once again, thank you so much for your support, and please make sure your cell phones are silenced at this time. Without further ado, we hope you enjoy this Old Line Players production of the Drama Department.
opportunity this is for the students? For you, Gerald. It's exciting for you. For all of us. We'll finally have an orchestra. Correction. We will finally have an entire theater. We need the rest of the grant money to buy lights, drapes. We can't afford new band instruments. They're not band instruments. They're instruments for the orchestra. For the band to be used in band class. And I wish you would just admit it. What's the point of having an orchestra pit if it just sits empty? Pit, as in hole in the ground, as in the audience can't see you. Conversely, if we don't purchase lights, the audience won't see the actors. I spent 16 years in the back room of Janine, but I had a black curtain. And it's been your dream to conduct the Philharmonic. Big picture, Gerald. What if Rob budgets the rest of the money away and I'm left with nothing? I'll buy you kazoo. How would you give your ulcer a rest and see what the man has to say? Where's Rob? I've been waiting in the parking lot for 20 minutes. He'll be here. Good morning, Stuart. Tell him to come to my office the minute he gets in. Can't you wait two minutes? Good morning, Stuart. Good morning, Gerald. Do either of you know what time he puts up the cast paper? The what? The this. The paper that tells the kids what part they're playing. It's called the cast list. What time does he put it up? Is Gerald posted after first period? Well, don't. Don't show it to anyone. Not until after I talk to Rob. Maybe he stopped to see his mother. He had to move her into a home. Stuart, do you have a match? I thought you quit. I stopped carrying matches. I only smoke when people make me upset. You make yourself upset. Can you at least buy music stands when the lights all fall off? I'm tired of borrowing everything from my church. That's what churches are for. Tell him to find me. He's here. Our kingdom shall be saved. It's perfect. You've made me the happiest woman in all of Chippewa Valley. Forty-five minutes. I spent waiting for Duran Fabric to open. So I could turn a cotton brocade that doesn't move. Rob, I needed polyester. Who knew those words ever passed these lips? Rob, if we can discuss how the rest of the grand. It practically be. dances by itself. We want the three singing birds to look like the Supremes. If we want them to sound like the Supremes, we need to buy more instruments. Rob, the orchestra is an integral part of the musical. So are lights and sound. It's called a musical, not a light pole or a sound pole. <laughs> Rob, one second. I have an announcement. Hear ye, hear ye. I stayed up all last night and decide how I'm going to spend the rest of the grant months. Rob, before you say anything. And at least 65% of it will be used to decorate the lobby. Yes. Decorate the lobby. And? Is this why you didn't want to spend any money on my new instrument? And? I don't appreciate your tone. Don't talk to me about tone. I'm a musician. And? The mm. other 35% will be used to buy a few badly needed instruments for orchestra. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rob. Hold this. Look, you have to change the casting. What are you talking about? You didn't give Greg Barnes the role of the cat in the hat. No. He's going to play for it. The elephant. I'm not sure you know who Greg Barnes' father is. I want just below the knees. Early 60s. You two Diana Ross from the Ed Sullivan Show. He happens to be head of the school board. Ted Barnes, I know very well who he is. He's my boss. What if these kids don't know who the Supremes are? They know Beyonce. <laughs> he called me this morning to find out if his son was cast as the cat in the hat. And you told him? Stuart. I emailed you that list as a formality. What was I supposed to say? No one gives out that information but me. The guy hit the roof. Greg Barnes has played with me in nearly every production since the seventh grade. He wants to give his son one last chance to win the Best Actor Award. This time, someone else is better suited for the role. That's how theater works. The guy built you a new auditorium. All he is asking is that you give his son one last chance to play the lead. He what? Wait a minute. Ted Barnes told you he built the auditorium? He put it on the ballot. Ask the town forced him to. We paid it outside the superintendent's office for three weeks in the middle of winter. They were tired of giving money to a football team that never wins. Drama is the only thing this school has going for it. It's the only thing this town has going for it. DeSoto has sports, Doug Bill's brains, and we have drama. If it wasn't for Rob, we'd have nothing. Gerald, that's a terrible thing to say. We have a wonderful tennis team. Doubles. We have a wonderful doubles team. We yeah. stick in singles. Gerald. I can say that with coach. If anyone built us the new auditorium, it was the taxpayers. A 1.5 million capital improvement bond for Chippewa Valley High School. Slam dunk. That really isn't the point. Call Mr. Reno. He'll tell you. Mr. Reno is no longer the principal of this school. I am. 
Who's David Sullivan, anyway? He's who? You gave the lead role to a kid you don't even know. Stuart? I had to give Greg Barnes the role of the elephant. David Sullivan is skinny. Greg Barnes, on the other hand, is husky. He's imposing. He's fat. It's head casting. I'm taking a lot of heat here over the grant money. Every department has their handouts. Coach Ledress is begging me for a new weight room. What, so the football team can lose with bigger muscles? <laughs> Barnes is calling me back in 10 minutes. Advice for the new guy, don't get sucked in. Tell Mr. Barnes out of your jurisdiction. But it is my jurisdiction. I'm the principal. I thought this place was going to be easy. A tiny little high school in the middle of nowhere. It is, Stuart. It's very easy. And very reward. And the fact that it's a tiny town actually makes it all the more difficult. Because there isn't a lot else to think about. Stuart, we are about to embark on the most important production of our career. I'm about to run for the first time in all my years. Here, in a real theater, we have a brilliant cast, a wonderful musical director, who will finally fulfill his dream of conducting an entire orchestra with some brand new instruments. Two oboes and a clarinet, and please God, a cello. We have a superb associate um, director, associate costume designer, uh, assistant choreographer, right hand man slash left hand slash both wrists. <laughs> this tiny little high school in the middle of nowhere. 16 years ago when I started here, do you know how many kids auditioned for the musical? Three, three kids auditioned. We're stuck doing I do, I do, two characters. <laughs> in 16 years, we've come home with so many trophies, they had to build another display case. Every school in the state quakes when we walk into the room. Pride, loyalty, confidence. That's what we brought to this school. And in my hand, an application for the Jester Award for Best Production of a High School Musical in the State of Kansas. Oh, Rob! In six short months, the state trophy will be sitting outside your office. A photo of you cradling in your arms will appear at every newspaper in the district. You'll have so many feathers in your cap, you'll look like Sitting Bull. If he comes to the school, I'm sending him to you. As a high school student, I do deal with bullies. As a teacher, I do not. He's a very persuasive man. So am I. He has a lot of power in this town. So does this department. Parting is such sweet sorrow, I am off to paint who Valorana Tezka. Act well by part of principal. For there thy honor lies. Close that class. I should have stayed a teacher. Why didn't you? I hate teaching. <laughs> Don't post it. Give me three hours. Three examples. 
Did you see Greg Barnes broke his finger because he didn't get the part? His face turned purple and he got so mad, he punched the bookcase like he made it look like wood. Sarah, it's steel. I wanted to laugh, but I was a little afraid he might burn down my house or eat my dog or something. <laughs> I'm kind of not kidding. Sarah, don't you have work to do? Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm your fiddle bluebird. Congratulations. I know. <laughs> Sarah's working on the debate project to compete in regionals. It was very nice meeting you. I'm excited to, you know, share the stage. Oh my gosh, you're so funny. <laughs> That's Sarah. She's going to play the keyboard. She seems nice. And you, David Sullivan, have been cast as a starring role of the Cat in the Hat. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. You're about to become the most popular guy in school. See, I thought I was auditioning for the chorus. And you were cast as the lead. The guidance counselor said it would be a good way for me to fit in. And now you'll stand out! There will be reviews, websites. Mr. Collins, the biggest part I've ever played had three lines. <laughs> Tonight, Aldonza, how much, Aldonza? And Padre, come quick. A man of La Macha. Mr. Collins, I can't accept Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. David, do you feel you don't deserve the role? Because your audition was sincere, honest. You actually made sense of the dialogue. I only did well because you let me read the script beforehand. You were the only one who bothered to come in and ask for it. People will start talking about me. In what better way to know you made it? Did You had three lines in Manuel Macho. What did you do the other two and a half hours? We were singing her, dancing her, raping Aldonza. We watched. We were all on stage the whole show. And did you listen? Yes. And what did you hear? Lines. Okay, lines. What's one line? Tell me your favorite line. To dream the impossible dream. To dream the impossible dream. To fight the unbeatable foe. To fight the unbeatable foe. And what do those lines say to you? That you can do whatever you want. You can be whatever you want. Yes, and how does that make you feel? The fact that you can do whatever you want, be whatever you want. I don't know. Inspired, motivated, happy. Happy. And that's how the audience felt. And they only felt that way because you put on a show. Maybe they left their thinking, hey, maybe I can dream the impossible dream. Maybe I'll go home tonight and beat that unbeatable foe. You have that power. And I promise you, I, Mr. C, promise that together we'll make your cat in the hat the most magical storyteller ever written. Please. Okay. You have no idea how much this means to me. I'll try. And how often do you get to wear a tall red and white striped hat? You want this back? Get to our number ones. I have my own copy. The rest will come in a couple weeks. Hey, while you're here, make yourself comfortable. We'll go over a few of Mr. C's rules. First off, my room is your room. I want you to feel... Where'd you buy that shirt? Why? I was looking for that material this morning to make back to the show. Don't find an invention. May I? <laughs> I didn't buy it. Did your mother make it? Mr. Fair's gonna flip. Do you know how hard it is to find people who know how to sew? Do you think she considers sewing costumes for us? Sure. Here, what's her number? I'm gonna start getting her call this afternoon. You know what? I'll have to get it for you. You don't have your mother's number in your cell phone? No, I do. It's just my mom didn't sew this, Mr. Collins. You. My grandmother. <laughs> You made this? I don't tell many people I sew. Do you know how jealous I am right now? It didn't make me too popular at my last school. David, how would you like to be the man in charge of costume construction? You'll oversee an entire group of volunteers. Really? I want the judges from the Jester Award to see a first-rate cast. Beautiful set. Costume. Impeccably so. I've never even seen a Jester Award. It's like a Tony Award. Only bigger. With tassels. I don't want to jinx it, but they do give once the best costumes. Oh my god! Now, Mr. C's rules. My room is your room. My personal collection. Over 2,000 plays. 117 musicals. I go to New York twice a year. I've seen nearly every one of these shows. In New York, on Broadway. Any questions? Just one. Where do I catch the late bus? It took off last year's budget cuts. Please don't tell me you don't have a ride home. It's not a problem. I can walk. Where do you live? 13 and Ryan. 
Bryant Avenue? It's not far. It's over five miles. Can't you call your parents? My mom works, and my dad's at home around, so. Isn't there anyone else? I don't know anyone else. Come on then, just this once. I assumed you had a late bus. I assumed you had a ride home. My bad. What's bad? I get to be the cat in the hat. hours yesterday rummaging through every paint chip and wallpaper store in the state of Kansas. It's depressing to realize you have the taste of a math teacher. Is that what my co-chair of the debate team was after school? When else do I have time to do this? I had 47 students begging me for advice on paint topics. Do you want your audience to walk into a construction site? All right, let's see what you got. Looks like a set for Annie. Sweetie Todd. Wicked. Something rotten. I hate this. Two arms, two legs, one head. 
He's perfect. So I'm very happy for you. This isn't going to change anything. I know it's going to help you out and meet someone. You know what? Forget him. This weekend, you, me, and Christopher. Are you sure? We can go visit your mom. Oh, and I'd love to go to the gym after school today. I can pick up Christopher for you. You don't mind? You gotta keep bringing him in. I'll swing by your place and pick him up later. Whatever. Where'd you get that donut? Blow winds, blow and crack your cheeks. Rage, you cataracts, and drown thy coughs. You know Shakespeare. I read King Lear. In high school? Last night. I bring wonderful news. You didn't get any polka dots? There was only one. The school board realized that you were put in an awkward position. They'd like to offer you a new one. New what? Position. They feel the auditorium will need a sort of official artistic director. This person would make all artistic choices, schedule events. This person would also get a small bump in salary. I'll take it. How much? The <laughs> offer is for all. And all this person would have to do to get that small bump is change the casting. Why is this so important to the entire school board all of a sudden? Maybe Ted Barnes bought them all donuts. In addition, I would personally hand over the honor of giving the speech. What speech? At the ribbon cutting, <coughs> the new auditorium. Of course Rob is giving the speech. It's his auditorium. They want it given by the man <coughs> in charge. Which is who? You? Fine with me. No, that's a horrible idea. You've only been here for a month. You have no idea what this place means to us. That's where you all come in. I hate speeches, hate writing them, hate giving them. I'm not interested in teaching my students. He who has the most money is wins. Give the job to Elise or Gerald. Me? Gerald will just give all the money to his church. My church has to be quite solvent. Thank you very much. Forget Ted Barnes. Do it for me. I'm on a trial period for two years. After that, I don't care who you cast. I'll back up any decisions you make. Sorry, Mr. Sheet. I'll come back. No, come in. Oh, David, have you met our new principal, Mr. Elliot? Mr. Elliot, this is David Sullivan, the very talented young man who will be playing the role of the cat in the hat. He's not that skinny. He could play an elephant. <laughs> What can I do for you, David? Um, it's okay. The sewing volunteers don't know how to roll a hem, so they're ruining the material. All we're doing in gym class this week is playing dodgeball, so I asked Coach Labrys if I could be excused so I could get everything started for them. It's a great idea. I thought so too, but what I asked. I know how to sew. I'll help you. What's wrong with dodgeball? He's learning sportsmanship, team spirit. For what? When he grows up to be a big red ball thrower? I'll write you past to get you out of class. We just need Mr. Elliot's okay. Is that okay with you, Mr. Elliot? To let him skip class? What do I get? Costumes impeccably sewn, worn in award-winning production, that you will do the speech for during opening night. An oration that will have the entire student body and faculty at your feet for at least, oh, two years. Caesar spoke and the crowd wept with tears of gratitude and joy. I'll meet you in the sewing room, David. You better help me write my speech. I promise to scrutinize every word so thoroughly you won't even know what you're saying. Uh, something else, David? He laughed at me in front of everyone. Who did? Coach Lazarus. What in Addy? They all started laughing. I told you, Mr. She, at my other school, when they see what a great sewer you are, they'll be just as jealous as I am. Dude, dude, let's go make some costumes. Please, Mr. C, don't worry. I won't tell the coach. Now go, go forth, young man. Lead thy volunteers into the fray. Go!
My grandma would talk. My mom and I were living with her. Why? My parents were separated. No, I mean, why would she teach her grandson how to sew? She lived on a farm. You have to be self-sufficient. You should think about going to church. That's something your grandmother should taught you. It's something we do here. I apologize to Mr. C. He's under a lot of pressure. I know how that feels, Mr. C. The reason my mom and I moved here, the reason we left the other high school, it got really bad there. Really bad how? A lot of pressure. But then I came here and I'm like, this is it. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Theater. That's good, isn't it? It's been great. It really has. To figure that out, I mean. And it's enough for me right now. So if you feel you want to change your mind. About what? If you want to give the role to Greg Barnes, why would I do that? I'm just saying. Dave, I know exactly what this is about. You do? You know exactly what this is about? Of course I do. Everyone's nervous the first time they play a lead. How about this? In the ninth grade, I had to be the shyest kid in school. Hey, fully shy. And I did teacher, Mr. Eckhart, meanest old grump in the world. <laughs> One day, he thought he was gonna fix me. He made me get up in front of the board and write the Gettysburg address. I shook so badly I couldn't even lift my arm. And the chalk melted in my hand from perspiration. Cut to two years later. Katie's English class. She loves theater. So passionate, so inspiring. She asked each of us to learn Shakespeare monologue. And then a few days later, she said, we want to perform for the class. And the next thing I knew, Speak the speech, I pray to you, as I pronounce it to you trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it as many of your players do, I leap the town crier and spoke my lines. And all that pain, all that fear, vanish. That's what I want you to do. Greg has a lot of friends, Mr. Chief. Ignore them. They watch you because you're a star. Here. What's this? Keys. Do a lock. 